Hi everyone, welcome back to Chelsea Fan TV. My name is Nina and I hope everyone is having a good day, enjoying pre-season and of course looking forward to the upcoming fixture against Newcastle, which is so much more exciting now that we have seen exactly how we are playing in pre-season, guys. And I think it's fair to say that we can all take this as such a big positive. You know, Wrexham or not, we also played Brighton, you know, a Premier League team that stood out so much this season, beat us literally home and away. So it's safe to say that we can absolutely be taking a lot, a lot of positives out of these past few games. And it's just been so refreshing to feel happy about what you're seeing on the pitch guys because you know we kept saying things are slowly kind of coming into place Pochettino walking through the door the recruiters are doing their job and kind of picking the best out of the you know the youngsters that are now rising up and we are seeing exactly why they were looking as far away into Brazil as they were and a lot of things are just being justified on the pitch which is key because as we said you know things were starting to look a lot better kind of behind the scenes you know after we kind of sat Graham Potter and the team kind of realized who needs to go as well following from him and of course after things you know went so terribly Frankie as well at the end of the season it was safe to say that we were all just waiting for the transfer window so we can get rid of everyone that we need to and give a chance to the youngsters, give a chance to those who Pochettino is keeping an eye on. Is he loaning them out? Are they going to be playing for the first team in the Premier League this season? And there's just been so much excitement around that. So, of course, before I get into anything, guys, I'm going to ask you to subscribe to Chelsea Fan TV if you haven't done so already. Lots of content coming out around all the preseason games, so look out for that. Of course, leave a like and comment down below your thoughts on this video. Are you agreeing or disagreeing with any of my points? But I'm going to talk a little bit about the players that I'm excited about. A little bit about what Pochettino has already began to do with his system, you know, already leaving a footprint. And yes, some will argue that it's pre season, you know, things will change, but it's so important after everything we've been through that we now kind of start an actual system essentially, and we all know that we're going to be patient with that. And um, we're seeing little sparks of that. We're seeing some patterns of play as well. And we're seeing it from players that, you know, have either had a very small time sample of, you know, experience kind of professional football and have barely played with each other you know have barely had five minutes of training sessions so after kind of doing their warm-up games of learning their names they're now bashing in goals doing little one two link ups fabulous fluid football being played and there's just so much to look forward to and take from so of course it was a five nil win against Wrexham to kick off pre-season full of lots of positives. It was a fun kind of, I'd say, game as well. It looked like they had fun. It looked like the players were relaxed. And it's what you want to see after such a tense season where everything was just so dull and difficult and boring and just repetitive in every single negative aspect. So it looked like the players were absolutely up for it, you know, willing to play. And we said after last season that, willingness and the attitude and the desire to want to play is literally the first and foremost thing you need to possess to be at Chelsea next season. That is how low our standards got. You know, Rhys James said the same thing. He said the reason that so many things went wrong last season, I think Thiago Silva said something similar, is because we had too many players. There were players that were unhappy. There were players that wanted to leave, you know, last year and were kind of being dragged along for an extra season when they didn't want to be there. So now that we have kind of systematically gone through you know, clearing those players, we have chronologically worked our way into, you know, bringing in the players now in the starting lineup that are going to be tested to see if they are ready for the first team or if they will need to go on loan, get a, you know, a good loan deal to improve their potential and develop their talent further, you know, playing in whatever league it may be. So for me, it's been exciting to watch. Like I said, to see the players be up for it is something that I'm, you know, grateful for. I went to countless Premier League fixtures last season where it looked like no one could be bothered to be there. So to see them, you know, have that desire, and especially as a young player, you're going to want to prove yourself even more. And we saw them do that. 
So, yeah, and then we played Brighton and it was a fantastic, you know, 4-3 scoreline, which is is great to see. You know, as I said, we haven't beaten them in our what was meant to be our best kind of squad when we brought them out to play against them. And we had our youngsters kind of, you know, put on a good show, play against some of the very talented players that Brighton have. You know, we saw Matoma be given a hard time, you know, of Augusto, and nobody really expected to see that at such a high kind of quality level there. So, you know, they're really trying and we've seen it time and time again. Sometimes that desire and that attitude and the persistence gets you through more than your actual technical abilities because that is what encourages you to be better and to perform and to keep fighting and, you know, not drop form. So what I'm seeing is fight, what I'm seeing is creativity and what I'm seeing is a lot more movement movement you know inside the box kind of you know transitioning from midfield into attacking a lot more smoother what I'm seeing is a lot more forward football rather than kind of keeping it in possession and stuff because you know we've seen youngsters kind of always rely on that maybe playing it safe perhaps keeping it closer to into possession and stuff but no you know we're seeing some through balls we're seeing some great turns we're seeing some little flicks and tricks and it's absolutely great to see and you know i could sit here and talk about all the all these individual players for days but collectively is exactly what I want to be speaking about today because we saw it last season, we had individual displays and we were saying, okay, but we are not a team. We're not a team and we're not able to create, you know, attacking threat as a team because we are all a bunch of individuals. Now, even though we have barely played five minutes as a, as a squad, you know, as a new squad, I'm seeing a lot more cohesion. I'm seeing, you know, these little link-ups, you know, between players like Jackson and, you know, Madrid you know somebody that Mudrick I was banging on so much if you've ever watched anything I have ever said about Mudrick guys I have said just be patient with the guy because he's got the capacity he's got the quality he's got the drive and he has got the talent and you know that finish was wow I think you'll all agree when I say I replayed it at least 20 times because it was just so smooth and you know Jackson gets equally as much credit for that because that was a great little one to there and if we can see half of that in the Premier League next season guys we're gonna be boosting that goal attack um sorry goal assist ratio so much more and it's going to be insane so it's just being patient and recognizing these talented players that we have and it's gelling them together because Poch is here to create a collective again is what we need and then it's consistency then it's building on that then it's finding that system where we can play fluid football and we can be you know absolutely electric and you know one player I will absolutely credit today is Nicholas Jackson because he has stood out he has shone and if you go and watch Carefree Queens the most recent episode that Michelle and I filmed we were discussing if we think that Chelsea should you know splash the cash go out and spend you know ridiculous money on a you know well-established player and bringing it bringing them in and then kind of scoring five goals you know next season and kind of disappearing after that we decided that it would be a lot more sensible to give Nicholas Jackson that opportunity because yes, he's working off a small sample from the goals he scored at Villarreal, but he is working on so much potential. And, you know, you can see it, the way he came out and presented himself, you know, saying that he wants to be like, you know, Drogba and be kind of those Chelsea legends that we, you know, treasure so heavily. And for him to even have that as a as a kind of ambition there is, you know, fantastic. And what you want from your strike and nothing more is obviously responsibility to shoot. And we saw that he has that, you know, when he's in a position where he can look up and shoot, he'll do it. He's not afraid to do it. And when he's in a position where he thinks that making a pass is a lot more effective and will lead to a goal scoring opportunity, he does it. So the decision making from him has so far been, you know, absolutely astonishing. You know, his little assists that he makes as well. So to have that as a striker means you're not only going to get goals, it means your wingers are going to get goals as well, guys. And if we're playing a little front three, like, you know, Madrid, for example, Medweke and Jackson up top, Madrid and Medweke will be bagging goals as well. Exactly for the reason that I just mentioned, exactly for the way that Madrid scored his goal, because Jackson has that decision-making ability in him to just be able to tell, you know, turn his back, little flip, like Giroud used to do almost. And I think it's going to be very special. 
I think it's going to be so special. And yeah, you can say two games isn't consistency, but three will be, and then four will be. And then, you know, from then on, you can only get better. And, you know, playing at the highest level is just going to make you better. So for me, playing him in those Premier League fixtures is going to be what makes him and moulds him into that striker. So I, as a Chelsea fan, have full faith that, you know, Nicholas Jackson can be our number one. And we can push that even more because I truly think that he's got the qualities. He's obviously got the mentality for it as well. And I think he is a player that is going to complement and push the team to be better rather than being that isolated striker up top that just kind of waits, you know, for goals and, you know, bring it onto my head, bring it onto my foot. No, he works. He's going to have a high work rate, which is going to be so crucial to being that cohesion you know having like being that glue almost up top in our attack and he's only going to get better if he gets those minutes guys so bringing in a 100 million striker will bench him and probably won't give him that opportunity to get better because of course he got his consistent games at Villarreal when he was you know scoring in the kind of second half of the season and he only did that because he got to build and he was a regular starter so I'm full faith on Nicholas Jackson, but we have so much young talent to be excited about, guys. You know, I'm looking forward to Newcastle. I predict, let's give out a little score prediction, guys, and you let me know what yours is to round out this video. I'm going to say, I think Newcastle will score. Defensively, we did see that we still have a little bit to work with. Um, you know, that's fine because we are kind of solving our goal scoring problems, which is absolutely at the top of that. But I'm going to go, I say either 3-1 Chelsea. I want to say 3-1 Chelsea or 3-2 Chelsea is my prediction, guys. Please let me know in the comments down below what your score prediction is. Like, subscribe and comment down. I am eager to find out your thoughts, guys, how you're finding preseason and what your expectations are for next season. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you have a lovely week.